Well, hello there. Good morning. My name is HW. Today, I'm going to be working on um, some profiles. Now, I have a plan to release a certain pack later in the week. However, I want to make some pedal profiles that didn't, uh, pedals that didn't make it into my sort of vintage stop box uh, pack that I just put out for free. And I think I'm going to do some more pedal profiles the way those came out. I still have, um, I still have the mic set up on the G1265s uh, in the studio. So I can be 100% consistent with the mic setup uh, compared to the, the vintage, you know, stop boxes. But I wanna do some, some more stop boxes that may not be vintage. I've got a King of Tone, I've got, um, uh, you know, um, I've got some boutique stuff, right? I've got the King of Tone. Um, I've got like, uh, what's that JHS one? The Superbolt um, that I really like. Uh, I've got the, um, the the Brown Box, is it called? Green Box? Brown Box? Brown? Bo I don't know, that, that cool one um, that everyone talks about, the blue and green side one. I dig that. Um, but I also have some like, some strange pedals where I've got a, uh, an Ibanez Fat Cat and um, a lot of people don't know about that pedal. That was sort of like Ibanez's attempt to do like a rap kind of style thing. It's called the Ibanez Fat Cat and it was back in the uh, TS-10 series. So it's got that sort of, uh, um, you know, lineage and look to it. Um, another one I've got is uh, the Sonic Distortion from uh from ibanez which is which is cool it was like their evolution of a of a ts9 a tube screamer um and it's a pretty early one uh, it's from the late 80s and again kind of like they were like what if we put more gain on this thing what if we adjust the eq a little bit kind of evolving a tube screamer uh in a way that i don't know that the market uh, overall really ended up you know jiving with totally so that's that's going to be interesting, um, but I want to run it through the same platform, and I can do that because I haven't I haven't messed with the setup. I've still got the uh, Dumbo Phonics up there, um, and so that is the goal for today. I'm going to capture those for the Kemper. I'm going to do them for the QC at another time because I don't need the setup to be the same, and I want to move on to do some other profiles and some other stuff, and I got to finish some IR packs that are coming up. So uh, I'm just gonna do a bunch of these updates throughout the day. Uh, so let's go. Mm. Okay, so um, running downstairs to the studio. Uh, maybe some people don't know, actually, I just built this. I built, you know, the space I do everything in uh, down, down in my basement and uh, it's great. It's great. It makes for a short commute. I was in the kitchen and now I'm at work. Um, actually, it's really great. I get to do everything in here and um, uh, I'm pretty much done. I need to add some more sound stuff. Um, I need to add some more sound treatment. But what's great is, you know, I can like see my kids outside when they get off of school and stuff. And then they usually knock on the window and, Dad, come throw the ball at us. You know, that kind of thing. Anyway. So, uh, there's a lot of, there's, there's, th this is what I want. I, 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 I want to add to the whole pedal thing because people really liked it. And I think it's really useful for people who just want to have like a pedal board, right? And, and kind of approach it like that with the Kemper. And, and also I got to tell you with the QC, it's, it's working out really well. Um, excuse my messy desk here. I've always got like a lot of stuff everywhere. Um, but it's the pedal thing on the captures of the pedals on the QC is really nice. Um, but for the Kemper guys, you know, you kind of can achieve the same thing as long as you're willing to accept this as your clean amp, you know, um, and go like, well, this is, a, this is an American kind of clean, but it's actually, uh, more of a boutique -y clean because it's got like a healthy amount of mid range and stuff. Um, and it, it's really the Dumble kind of flavor, but I got all sorts of cool drives that I really want to do that I think would be cool. They're not super vintage. So like I said, they didn't make it in, but the broadcast, um, this is kind of a cool germanium, uh, preamp. It's kind of fuzzy. 
Uh, probably won't do this TS9. It's it's not like an original or anything. It's just a reissue. Uh, probably won't do that one, but uh, King of Tone, obviously. Why not? We're talking about pedals. Probably do them together. Um, Sparkle Drive. Here's that SD9, the Sonic Distortion. This is a cool pedal. Um, and I also have an SD1 in the other room that I might throw in just to do the asymmetrical Tube Screamer thing. Um, but that's also just a reissue. Um a little bit of an older one, but but I'll definitely do this one. Um, why not do the Morning Glory? Maybe just so people can connect, compare it to an actual blues breaker. And um, uh, yeah, you know, it's got the high gain switch too, so why not? Uh, this is a pedal that Michael Britt made for me. I will not do this one, because uh, he should do it. Um, maybe I'll profile it for myself, uh, but I won't put that out. Uh, but uh, actually, maybe I'll profile and send it to him and go, here you go, Michael. Uh, guess what this is? So if you watch this video, I spoiled it already. But uh, AOD, this is a this is a unique one. Um, unique. I don't know that it's amazing, but it's cool. It's kind of cool. Um, and why not? Uh, these are probably these are all going to be free profiles. So um, you know, when stuff I, I like I like putting out stuff for free because it takes the pressure off to kind of like create something that like is. I, I just feel like I feel like there's not as much pressure for like. You gotta make you, you gotta you, you gotta make something that people really want to pay for, and I feel like it's okay to be a little bit redundant, and it's okay to throw in something like this. Like I don't want to tell people this is worth some amount of money. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. It's like nothing you've heard of, and um, it's not really that like different than other stuff out there. So, is it like a like you must have this drive? No, I don't think so. Here is the Fat Cat, and. Um, the Fat Cat Distortion is um, kind of like it was. It's called the FC10, and it's it's from this lineup of the the ten stuff, um, which is um, what do they call these? Not the Sound Tank. Uh, I can't remember, but it's like you know the TS10. So these like were coming out in the mid '80s, and this was uh, Ibanez's version of like a rat. They tried to do like a you know what if we did our own rat kind of thing. Earlier I said brown box. Uh, I meant I meant this the protein from brown amp amplification. Got some other cool stuff over here. Super Bowl. I dig this. Um, sound tank TS5. The sound tank tube screamer. Uh, pretty pretty cool. Um, probably my least favorite of the group. Uh, this one this one is a cool tube screamer. Um, and, uh, Ibanez, you know, they're like, oh, people's pedals, you know, you'll lose your setting. So push them in a, 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 truly a solution in search of a problem. Right. Um, but anyway, uh, this has got the hot mode. So this can kind of do the TS nine thing is what it says. And I think the circuit might actually be pretty much identical to a TS nine. And then you've got the hot mode. I'll definitely do the hot mode and I'll listen to the TS nine. See if you get anything out of there. Uh, that's worth it. That's different. ODR one. I'll definitely do that. Um, this is the most magical pedal on the planet. Um, this is kind of, this is one of the best pedals ever made. Uh, it doesn't get a ton of, um, love, but the guy who made this, uh, shoot, can't remember his name. He's on YouTube talking about it though. He, his, he's an Eric Johnson fan. And if you think about what that means in terms of Eric's tone, um, if, if you like Eric's tone, you are liking, chorus and tape delay on two amps uh 50 watt old marshalls usually 50 watts sometimes hundreds whatever uh super bass you know uh it, it's kind of his when he goes for the 100s i believe super basses are kind of what he leans towards but you know eric's old marshalls and eric's old twins or pro reverbs um are are my uh, understanding of kind of what he's used the most um stuff moves around of course this pedal tries to do that, and it gives you some crazy, crazy good, um, it gives you like a brightness and darkness kind of thing, and brighter is more twin, and darker is more like blues breaker, you know, and then you have body and loudness, so loudness, you can get a little bit of breakup out of this thing, but the body is like the full low end, like um, the nice fullness, even low mid-range, and then air is the extra present top, which you get on a plexi, but also you get on a twin and stuff. So basically what this pedal is designed to do is take your twin, like you can see my reflection there, take your twin and add to it the stuff that makes it very not like a twin and much more like a blues breaker. 
and then take your blues breaker and make add the stuff that makes it much more like a scooped twin and stuff. So really, really cool pedal. I would say you can use this in sort of the way of like a very light overdrive, but it's really more for changing the characteristic of the amp. And I will do that. I will put that in. And um, the Giggity is fantastic. If you are running pedals, you should get a Giggity on your board. And if you run it after your drives, you treat the Giggity like a second channel of the amp and you can completely revoice your amp. I mean, it's like getting another amp. I, I, I think this is one of the greatest pedals ever made. Uh, I have no reason to tell you that if it wasn't true. I'm not selling you anything. I don't sell these pedals. I have no affiliation with them. And I'm not even going to sell to you the profile. So that's just my... That's just my God honest truth opinion. Um, so that's the goal. I'm going to do those. And um, maybe I'll do this because I, I like this pedal. This pedal's got a lot of cool stuff going on. But um, Brad Jackson yelled at me last time I did one of his amps. So maybe I'll just maybe I'll just omit that or something. Or I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll play. I'm just boosting an amp. So, you know, whatever. And then I also have a revival drive that's stellar. Stellar. I might pull that out. I might pull that out if I can find it. I can't, I couldn't, I didn't see it when I was gathering up my pedals, which makes me think maybe I lent it out to somebody. But anyway, that's that's kind of my attack for right now. I think that's what I'm gonna try to get on. So let me get all set up and I'm gonna I'm gonna start um I'm gonna do all the Kemper stuff today and the QC another time. Okay, so uh kinda kind of I got completely sidetracked. Um my lunch ended up getting here. I ran upstairs and I forgot I was getting a new guitar today. So uh jumping back to the pedals for a minute, I did these two. They sound good. This thing sounds really aggressive and really uh very present in the high end in a really cool way. Um what's funny is that's a mid-80s uh kind of thing, but it's got um it's got a very it's got a very 90s top end, I'd say, kind of, you know, very, very uh, high end sizzle, which which is cool, which is cool. Not in like a rat way, in a little different way. Anyway, New Guitar Day, uh, which um, I'm glad I'm doing these videos today because New Guitar Day. Uh-oh, uh-oh, where is it? Where is it? It's over there. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. What is it? Well... It is uh, a 1971, I think. Uh, check it out. Les Paul signature. Now, this guitar is really interesting. I'm gonna try and set my phone down for a minute here so I can talk about it. Um, this guitar is a unique kind of uh, animal because, 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 Uh, basically, it's fully hollow. First of all, it's it's beautiful. It really is. Um, I'm I'm super stoked with this thing. Um, I, I'll give you my opinion on guitars. I only buy two types of guitars for me. They have to fit into two buckets. Um, I have to be able to write them off as well as you probably should try to figure out a way to make a little bit of income from the guitar so you can write things off. Uh, and one of the ways to do that make a little YouTube channel and then accidentally fall in love with the Kemper and the rest is history. No, uh, that was my path, but um, I, I really think about the guitars that I buy in, in terms of what's going to be great for demo videos, like what's going to be a cool guitar that I'm going to enjoy that are really good for demo videos and that I can get a lot of value out of that way. What's a guitar I could do content on? What's a guitar that will round out the collection so that I can have interesting guitars and things in the YouTube videos and for the purposes of promoting packs and whatnot, right? The other thing though, the other bucket is what's something, and, and so for me, that's my serves, right? It's my, my here's my JM. And uh, that's where I just go like, hey, this is my, this is my guitar. I, these guitars go out of the house with me. I play live with this guitar more than any other guitar. Um, I, I have some of the other JM pros and maybe I'm gonna put different pickups and different ones, but I have like two or three of these JM pros that are really all the guitars I need and they're 90% of what I play. 
Compare that to something like uh, this, or like the Trini Lopez, which almost never leave the house. This has not left the house, it just arrived right now. But um, the Trini has maybe been played out in public twice. And once was when I lent it to someone to play at their church. Uh, and the other time was when I did. And I think it's a great guitar, I love it. Um, I have been able to use it in a number of videos and I've used it on a number of sessions tracking. Uh, I used the Trini in like a hip hop track I did for a guy. I did it on uh, uh, a really great Easter song that I did for Shelly. Uh, Shelly like does all the editing, graphic design, you know, for Tone Junkie, if, if, if you've heard of her. Uh, you've probably heard me talk about her. But um, she's a singer, a songwriter, an artist, a very talented one. Uh, and actually, um, some people who uh, I've mentioned Shelly to, they actually owned Shelly's record and uh, were like, that's Shelly? I was like, yeah, yeah, that's Shelly, Shelly Moore. Anyway, um, she did a, a great Easter song that you should look up called uh, Forever Now a Crown. And... Uh, um, I, I, I used, I used like three guitars on that track, but, um, I used the, um, I used the Trini and then the latest, uh, release that my church did, uh, which they go by the name, uh, Church House, Church House Music. Um, I, I used the Trini, we used the Trini on there for like, we just one or one or two little parts, um, just to give it some variety. So, uh, okay. All that to say. Vintage guitars are valuable, and they are not going down in value. Um, 70s guitars have risen in value uh, in an impressive way. I remember they were not loved. People did not enjoy, you know, the the, the volute, volute, I don't know how to say it, on the neck. Um, and these were very, like, you know, poo-poo or gear pagers. We don't we don't like those. But um, I... I um, I try to look for some vintage guitars that I almost view as like an alternative investment, you know? And I look at money and I go, well, I could buy the S&P or I could buy one of these. And this has the added advantage of allowing me to write off my taxes as well. So there's even like an additional sort of return. Now, one day I'll sell them and I'll have to pay something called depreciation recapture. Uh, anyway, maybe I'll save that for, uh, you know, the podcast or something. But the point is, this thing is awesome, awesome, awesome possum, uh, and it came from Action Music. The frets feel very similar to my 66, uh, to Sunny, the 66, um, uh, that, that sounds very good, and, um, but I might be selling that guitar because the Trini is the one that I play all the time. This one uh, might take its place. This is fully hollow. The tip is in the box there. It's got really unique electronics. And um, what's interesting is it's got all these different selectors and it's got dual outs. And um, you actually um, can change the value of the master tone. There's a master volume, master tone. There's a, 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 a selector switch to decide what's coming out of each output. You can send basically different pickups out, kind of like you know the old um, 345s. Um, this is um, b this being a Les Paul recording model, they kind of built in all that stuff. And then you actually have a value control, or what they call the level control, over the uh, value associated with the tone pot. So you basically can switch the tone pot from being a 500k resistance, 200k resistance, or a 50k resistance because these are um, something called, um, I'm looking at it right now, it looks like someone had had, had uh, actually mounted a different pickup in here, and there's a hole uh, drilled in there, but these are actually low impedance pickups that Les Paul kind of invented with Gibson back um, in the early uh, 70s, and they got the embossment on there, which um, is uh, correct for this year because all the pickups were getting the embossment that year in, uh, in I believe, 72. Uh, yeah, I believe it's 72, about 90% certain. So here's what's cool about this. I'm going to go on the neck pickup, and here you're going to hear the 50K resistance. Uh, 
I've got the delay on, on how I was playing around earlier. Um, that what you're listening to is a 59 5F6 basement profile on the Bright Channel. And that's a super thick sort of uh, sound. Now here's, here's really quick the middle position. Here's the bridge. Sounds like um, uh, like they're trying to go for the fat, fat humbucker, full size humbucker kind of thing. Now let's go to two hundred K. go up that it's, I mean it's quite a bit brighter right even on the bridge it's like telly-esque <laughs> uh, telly right I mean to me it's like it's like cutting kind of bright 500 500 <laughs> I'm not even sure if, if the the real present quality of that is going to quite come through or come out of the iPhone. That's a very interesting. Even on here, you know. a lick there and I couldn't remember uh, the accompanying uh anyway it's a thing I was learning earlier um it it's it's quite a bit it's very just present right <laughs> It's very bright. And you pull that back. Or you go in the middle. And in that middle position. guitar is it actually comes with a second instrument this is actually a harmonica er, no I'm just kidding uh, it's not a harmonica but they do call them harmonica bridges because they kind of resemble a marine harmonica right those mariners is that what they're called mariners uh, submarine harmonicas or marine marine band I think harmonicas um, I'm really excited about this guitar and look at this Ooh, is that some rich looking wood? That looks like my grandmother's kitchen circa 1976. I mean, that was all of the furniture, man. Look at that. What is that? Just throw some, 
flamethrower. I mean, if you went to high school in the 70s, you know, you had a party in a basement and everything was this color, you know? Your graduation party was in a basement. Every, You know, you 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 played spin the bottle in a room with this. This was everywhere, right? If that doesn't bring back some memories for some of you old timers, um, uh, you know, I don't know what does. Calm down, calm down, boomer. Um, I love the boomers. My dad's a boomer. I love him. Um, I love all the boomers. Except the ones that leave me negative comments on faith on YouTube, which I'm going to do a video out because there's a guy right now just leaving all these comments, you know, saying you can't get, you can't, be, there's not a good mix with the Kemper. It doesn't fit in a mix well. I've been in the business 30 years. He literally left this on a, he literally left it on a video of me and Michael Brett. And I'm thinking, do you have any idea who you're speaking to right now? Uh, not me. I'm talking about Michael. And I'm, I'm saying like, like he literally has number ones that he played on. He literally has toured the world since then and continues to make his living uh, in the band Lone Star, uh, you know, for, for 25 years, you know. And uh, it's just like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> For goodness sake, Mark Knopfler is using a Kemper on the road right now. It's just like it's just it's just not factual what the dude's saying. Anyway, um, I love this thing. I am gonna move on now. I've captured those pedals. I profiled those pedals. Um, I didn't capture them. That would be on the QC. I profiled them. Next up, I'm gonna do this uh, this guy right here, and maybe the Giggity or something. I gotta catch up because uh, this threw me off. Lunch threw me off, but I'm super excited. And I ordered a kid's 3D printer for my for my little guys. Um, and I'm excited to do that for them. Hopefully, maybe that'll be here this weekend or something. Um, anyway, what? Gibson Les Paul signature. You're going to see this. You don't see these guitars often. That's why I'm really happy to have it on the channel. People, I'm going to get all these questions. What is that guitar? I'm going to answer that one now for the next, you know, five years. Uh, but I'm excited to do it. So, I had a little Panda Express for lunch. I'm going to get back to um, uh, profiling the world, and uh, I will update you with another part uh, about what I'm doing today, so you can see what a day is like in the studio for me. Uh, and I'll do more of these, because not every day is the same. I'm doing no editing today. I'm just capturing some stuff, and not every day is a new guitar day, although we try to make those as, as, as frequent as possible. Uh, and uh, here we go. Let's, let's get, I got to get some work done. Well, hello there. I am officially exhausted. You thought I was going to say HW. You were wrong. I've had too much coffee today, so I'm going to stop drinking this. It is dinner time. My kids are home. It was raining, or else usually they would go play out there. I was hoping to capture that. That's usually what happens during during my day. Um, but uh, I don't know. Maybe they played video games or something. I'm really not sure. I'm going to go up and see them. It's about 5.30. Uh, I got a lot to do, so I would say three out of five days in the week. I'm usually coming back down here to finish some stuff up um, after I put my kids to bed. So I might do that. But um, that guitar right there is really good. You guys, it's really good. Uh, it, I think that... Les Paul was really up to something there. And look, musicians, real musicians, I mean, people who make their living playing, uh, or just play every day, day in and day out. And they really start to understand stuff and they start to figure out what problems are that I think a lot of the rest of us just accept as a limitation. And what I see going on with that guitar is the guy's rethinking pickups, right? And he's years and years into it. I mean, he had, Les Paul had made pickups for years. He had done sound on sound recording. He's really seasoned by the 70s. And uh, I mean, he's, he was one of the biggest musicians in the world with Mary Ford for, for a lot of those years. Uh, and, and probably, I imagine when he made that guitar, he, Les, is, Les is getting outside his heyday. He's, um, uh, I don't want to say he's over the moon in the 70s, but he's, his biggest commercial hits are behind him, right? I mean, he kind of peaks 
popularity-wise in the 50s with Mary Ford. And, you know, he gets to, he revolutionizes the electric guitar. He has sound on sound recording. And you take that guy and you fast forward him years and years later. And what it reminds me of, it reminds me of uh, a bit of like Leo Fender going, uh, oh, I'll make a solid state preamp. Uh, you know, that's the evolution of his amps when he, when he starts doing, uh, Music Man or when he does, um, uh, yeah, Music Man or when he does G&L, then, uh, you know, he's, he's making different pickups himself, uh, similar to kind of what Les is doing, uh, not similar in pickups, but just different, different ideas, um, and really sort of getting away from the classic, the classic, um, the classic thing. And it makes sense. If you think about it, the seventies are this weird time in history where we start seeing the first three issues where people for the first time are like, Oh yeah, let's, let's make like the things we used to make in the late fifties. And the guys who made it, uh, you know, they're, they're, they probably weren't high on their own supply and they realized it was, it wasn't magic. They could do better. So they were still willing to innovate when the industry starts only looking backwards, you know? Uh, really fascinating, uh, kind of, kind of guitar. What I think is going on there is for recording, he, he made it hollow, but there's a large block in the back. So that bridge is not just suspended on posts. There's a big piece of wood and a small space underneath it. And then an anchoring piece of wood. So it's interesting when I'm looking in there, what's going on there. Uh, in terms of, it looks like he, had some use to go to still multiple amps. Maybe he wanted to record out of one and then, I don't know, record out of one direct and then go to the amp on the other. I mean, I have no idea what he was thinking, but I do know that those low, I mean, if you think about it, the low, um, the low impedance pickup is meant to solve the problem of tone loss through, through the cable length. So, um, you know, similar to like a low impedance mic. So uh, it's interesting. Maybe that was a problem he was trying to solve in the studio or being live. Maybe he didn't, I don't, I have no idea what he was trying to do. Um, but what he, what, what I notice is that 50 K resistance um, is real fat and barky and more humbuckerish, especially on the neck. I go, Oh, okay. He's going for a hollow body jazz box warmth. Um, uh, but he has the bridge pickup in there and he can also make it very bright, very present, like a telly. And then also bringing in a little more of even an acoustic quality uh, to this high end presence. So really interesting stuff. I'm really excited to get that guitar this week in some demos. I got some videos to do. Um, I haven't done a ton of videos in the last week. Uh, and I know people have been requesting a podcast from me and, uh, Man, you guys, I'm just trying to make so many profiles and I've been working on IRs too for, for the Helix stuff that I got coming out and uh, just been so busy. But um, but life is so good. This is, the, this is the greatest job in the world. That's the truth. It's the greatest job in the world. I haven't had every job in the world, but so I'm, I'm reaching a bit. It's the greatest job in the world. But um, I get to hang out around all this like super awesome stuff. You know what I mean? And, and just, uh, and there's more of it back here and, and just, um, uh, you know, here, look, that's what I worked on today, all these pedals and stuff. And, um, I got to do a QC video. I got to do a Kemper video on the new fuzzes. And, uh, uh, this guy's giving me a hard time on YouTube. I'm going to make a video about responding to the haters or just people who just, I don't know, don't want to listen to logic or something. He's saying the Kemper cannot sound good in a mix. It's a toy. And I'm just like, what? And I'm like, bro, it, Okay, boomer. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the vibe I'm getting. I know that too, because he's I've been in the industry 30 years. You just can't. No one serious uses a Kemp. <sighs> Mark Knopfler is using a Kemper on the road right now. Countless acts. I'm not gonna name all the acts. You know. Anyway. Uh and yeah, I gotta and I gotta be and I gotta sell some stuff. So I might come back down. There might be a part five. This is part four. I might do a part five this evening where I come back down and get this stuff. Get, kind of get the rest of it done. But uh, yeah, HW is going to go eat dinner. 
All right. Well, uh, that's how I spent the uh, that's how I spent the day. It is uh, it's ten twenty five, and uh, had dinner with the family. You know, bathe the kids and everything. Watched a show with my wife, and then uh, um, fell asleep, and then uh, came back down here and put some finishing touches on some of these pedal profiles. And that's really cool. It's going to make a really great pack. I'm really excited about that. So this has been part number five. And uh, that's uh, this is a pretty typical day for me. Pretty typical day. I often come back down, uh, down here and work on some stuff once, uh, once the kids are in bed. So, you know. I never used to work as much. I didn't. I never worked as much when I had a real job. I never worked this much. But, um, you know, they always say, uh, you know, you find something you love, you never work a day in your life. <laughs> That's BS. I work a ton. And I love this. I love doing this. Um, and there's a lot of days it feels like work. Uh, but... You know, the idea of doing something else right now just is like, I don't know. It's like getting kicked in the balls, you know? <laughs> okay, it's 1030. I should, I, I should, uh, I should stop. Uh, I'm an HW. This is how, uh, there's been a day in the studio with me. It was a new guitar day. We did a bunch of pedal, de uh, pedal things. And um, you know what it made me think, man? I had a lot of thoughts today about uh, maybe I, gotta, I should start doing some videos just on some gear that's not Kemper related, just like pedals that I'm into. I'm really into pedals at the moment. Like I'm really enjoying pedals and um, I might just like get a recording set up. Like I have a new speaker coming for my deluxe reverb and I might just make it, hey, here's my deluxe reverb. Here's some pedals through the deluxe reverb. Um, that would be... That would be really good. I think we might do that. And like, maybe I'll just show all the Tube Screamers. Maybe I'll show, I mean, I'm I'm already planning to do some videos where I show every Blackface amp, you know, apart from the Kemper, like just because, um, you know, just just because like people wanna see what's a, what's a Champ compared to a Princeton compared to a Deluxe, you know, and just walk up the line, you know, a Deluxe, a Pro Reverb, a Vibra Lux, a Vibra Verb, you know, uh, a Super, a Concert, uh, just, just everything, man. Just everything. Amps are, they're so cool. Pedals are so cool, you know. Anyway, I gotta get to bed. I'm an HW. Thanks so much for watching Tone Jiggy TV. HW.